Hello, we're out today. Again, Lima, Peru. We are in the district of Barranco. And uh, this district is right next to Miraflores, to the south. We've just hopped off the Metropolitan, Metropolitano, the bus station. And uh, it's this beautiful little pedestrian walk right here. This neighborhood I don't actually know all that much about other than I've been told that it's kind of a bohemian kind of a neighborhood with um, lots of like art galleries and art museums and stuff like that. So I figured it's a beautiful day out today. Let's go check it out. Come on. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So there are a couple art museums here um, in the neighborhood, which uh, I like an art museum okay, but there's one museum that I actually really want to check out that's a little more nerdy, uh, and we're going to do it in this video. It's a museum to like the history of electricity in Peru and how they like, I don't know, I guess it's like uh, how they electrified the city, you know, back around the turn of the century. And I think that's really interesting, stuff like that. So, uh, as you can see here, at the end of the pedestrian walk, there's this beautiful little square, little plaza right here. Man, this neighborhood really is nice. People had told me that this neighborhood is quite nice. Um, I know that this neighborhood is known for, like, nightlife. We're not here at night. We're here in, like, late morning right now. But, man, look at this. On a nice sunny day, beautiful plaza, people hanging out, super nice. Oh, there's a nice library here, very beautiful, old architecture. It's like tucked up against the ocean, uh, and then on the other side, the, uh, the freeway comes down. And it sort of like pockets it in this little spot right by the, right by the sea. Very, very nice. And uh, this is also one of the neighborhoods when I was doing a lot of research about where to stay in, uh, you know, as a tourist here in uh, Lima. This is a neighborhood that a lot of people called out and said, this is one of the ones that you should check out and try and stay. And I did look at a few places here, um, but one of the things about this neighborhood, same as with Miraflores, but even like a little more so because it's even further south, is uh, this neighborhood is kind of far away from like the center of the, the historical center, like downtown, old downtown Lima. Um, like from where we are in Miraflores, which is already like pretty far south from where, uh, where the center is, this is like five or six more uh, stops along the Metropolitano. So uh, a little bit further, a little bit further away. And, uh, like, even though this neighborhood is, like, that far away, it is right next to a stop on the Metropolitano. So, like I said in uh, that video that we made about the uh, public transportation here in Lima, that Metropolitano, the bus rapid transit service, is uh, actually quite, quite efficient, man. You can get places real fast on that thing. So if you're in any neighborhood that's, like, close to a station, on there, you're pretty good as far as going north-south through the city. Like getting to the, uh, the central, um, like historical district of the city is pretty easy, but if you are here, it is a little far away, so it is gonna take a little bit longer. It's got these nice little narrow streets, very like old uh, Spanish colonial style narrow streets. Pretty cool, right at, at the edge of this park that we came through. There's uh, these stairs going down to, uh, I don't know, what seems like some sort of a historical bridge because I see some people like taking pictures on it. Another park down here. Oh, this is cool. Another park cut out of the hill here. 
nice bridge. Yeah, there are people people taking pictures on the bridge. This must be some sort of a uh, landmark. I'll find the name of it and I'll put it down in the subtitle. But nice little park down here. It's a church here. Looks like they're renovating. In the process of renovating. No, 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 gracias. And uh, up here, on top of the church, there are many vultures. This is something, I don't know if these are vultures or condors or what kind of bird, but I've seen these things all over the place. <laughs> like uh, when we were in the uh, Catedral down in the uh, historical center, these things were like flying all around. Those are not crows. They're definitely like vultures of some sort. Very picturesque little park right here. I think we're heading the right direction to get to the uh, the like museum, the electricity museum that we want to see. But on the way, it's a nice walk. This neighborhood already is like uh, I'm digging it. I'm digging this neighborhood already. We've only been off the bus for like five, ten minutes. Some other people are digging the neighborhood too. I see lots of people out here taking pictures and uh, walking around enjoying the day. Okay, so we found the museum. It's actually right next to the, uh, the square that we just walked through. And uh, along this street, which is really nice with all these trees lining the street. This actually reminds me quite a bit of uh, our time that we spent in uh, Mendoza, in Mendoza in Argentina, because, uh, I mean, just look, look down the street, all the uh, trees lining the street, very, very like, uh, like Mendoza. The museum's actually right there across the street, Museo de la Electricidad, and I don't know if you can see it, but over there, it says Electro Peru, well, Basically, uh, Electro Peru is like the uh, is like a Peruvian electricity company. So I think this whole thing is sponsored by like the Peruvian electricity company. Yeah, see Electro Peru up here on this side, on this side of the street, La Energía de los Peruanos. But there's a Estación Museo de la Electricidad where they have like a preserved um, old electric uh, tram car, like a rail car and they have these tracks which are no longer being used of course but i guess this is what what they used to have to get the, to get around the city for like public transportation in peru pretty cool anyway i think uh i think we should go over there and check this museum out what do you think let's do it one of the downsides while we're here of uh, having uh, trees lining your street is, uh, well, lots of bird poop. Gotta watch out. Gotta watch out, don't wanna get bird bombed. Anyway, let's go across the street, and check out this museum. So the museum was a bit smaller than I thought it was gonna be. And um, right here in the front room, they had sort of like a, a lot of like big industrial electrical equipment. And there were some signs out here sort of explaining what they were and um, one of them was sort of explaining about like I think about like high tension power lines and whatnot it was interesting but um, what I was really looking for was more of like a um, sort of a history of the like how they electrified the entire country right so in looking for that I, I did find this history of the the tram right Tranvia like we saw outside they had some seats of course from the tram there like the old ones and Maybe someone's famous butt sat in this seat. Um, I'm not sure. I tried the seat out and it was, um, it was quite comfortable. Uh, there was a room that was dedicated to like showing how a hydroelectric dam works. They had a whole diagram and even like some models of the hydroelectric dam showing like how the water comes down and where the power lines come in to take the electricity out. That's pretty interesting. And also in this room, we did find the history of the electrification of Peru, a timeline, which was pretty cool. 
Um, but in the next room, what I found was even cooler. They had like all these old electronic appliances, right? Electric appliances, including like some TVs here and then like uh, telephones. <laughs> of course, I noticed in here and it made me feel quite old. A older model cell telephone that, um, you know, I remember <laughs> from when it was actually on the market. They also had some audio equipment here, which was cool record players and radios and these two awesome old jukeboxes. And it was really cool to uh, actually look at the jukeboxes and see like some of the songs that were on the jukebox of that time, right? Very, very interesting. So um, it's kind of small, but um, I'm glad I went. Well, that was pretty cool, not bad. Very, very small, not a lot in there, but it was free, so definitely worth it. Um, I think, since we're here in Barranco, came all the way down here, might as well explore a little bit more. When I looked at on the map, I saw that Barranco is kind of this, uh, kind of a long north-south um, uh, district with one main commercial strip that runs straight up the middle. And I think actually it's right over here on the other side of the, uh, of the plaza here. So let's go. Let's take a walk up there and see what we see. Also kind of want to get something to eat because it's getting to be lunchtime and I'm kind of hungry. So we'll do that. As we're walking through the plaza here, I just spied a really, really awesome looking old car on the other side of the plaza here that's parked. And uh, I like old cars. If you saw the video that we made in uh, Cordoba, we found that museum with all those old cars. Well, I like old cars and this thing is so clean. Oh wow, look at this thing. So clean. Got to find out what kind of car this is. Whew. Check it out. This thing is clean as all hell. Oh, and it's for sale. Or say vende. I wonder if this is like for sale or if they're renting it. Say vende means for sale, I think, right? Whew. Clean as hell, this thing. Very awesome. Very cool. I don't know what kind of car it is. If anybody in the comments knows what kind of car this is, let me know. It's very cool. So the street is all, it's definitely like a commercial uh, street. It's all shops and restaurants, cafes, that kind of stuff all along here. Ooh, there's a delicious looking ramen place here. We may have to actually eat there, not gonna lie. Anyway, I was, uh, I was interested in coming to this one specifically because like, it's, um, it's very little. It's a very small neighborhood, like I mentioned before, which means, like, I could probably see a good bit of it just in, like, a few hours, right, walking around. And that's what I'm looking for, right? Efficiency. Okay, some neighborhoods uh, around here in, uh, in Lima are gigantic. They're, like, absolutely huge. And if you want to see the entire thing, you got to spend, like, days and days probably exploring it. And you won't be able to really do it all on foot. You probably have to, like, take a cab or an Uber walk around all over the place, get driven around, and uh, I don't really want to do that. I want to be able to walk. I want to be able to walk around the neighborhood. I like walkable neighborhoods. But this definitely looks like one. Yeah, I think this is basically this strip right here that we're walking along. If you walk up, you know, maybe like 10 blocks, you're kind of at the end, the other end of the neighborhood. We were down where we were, down to like the southern part of the district, and I think up here, you know, like I said, about 10, 10 blocks or so from what I see on the map, you're at the other end of the district. Ooh. You know what? There's a cafe across the street. I'm gonna get some coffee. See you in a few. All right, so that was okay. The coffee was pretty good. Sandwich. Eh, not so good. I don't think the sandwich itself, like those three plays, which I had never tried before, is a bad idea. I think it's actually pretty good, but that one was not great because the uh, avocado was quite underripe. So 
like literally crunchy. It's not what you want from avocado, but anyway, that's fine. Back out on the main uh, commercial drag here. I actually want to like head back into like the neighborhood here, into like the back streets a little bit to see what it looks like back there. So I guess we'll just go, just go over here. See what this neighborhood is like once you get off off the main street a little bit. It's pretty cool back here. What I really like about this neighborhood is there's a lot of like it's very colorful and the the architecture, a lot of like old style architecture, you know, like this house right here. Very cool. And like these these houses uh, that are up sort of like in a row here, all painted different colors. Really cool. These very old almost like Spanish colonial looking old architecture. Pretty cool, pretty cool. There's some construction going on in the street here. Oh, what's this? Some uh, huge, cool old building here on the other side of the street. Look at this thing. I wonder what this is. I'm gonna have to look this up. We're gonna look this up. We'll look it up. And we'll put in a little ex we'll cut in a little explanation of whatever the heck this thing is right here. It's very cool, whatever it is. You know what? I want to see if we can get closer to that thing. If we go around the corner, maybe we can find a way to see this thing up close. What do you think? Let's try. Doesn't look like it. There's a gate. Looks like it's been locked up for quite some time. The uh, fence along the side even has this big metal plate. So we can't even like stick our camera through and see whatever the heck this thing is. We're gonna lift our camera up over the top. You can get a view of whatever it is. I can't. I have no idea what this thing is. It does seem like there's some sort of a little booth here. Which makes me think at some point they were charging admission to this place. Well, this seems to be a separate building next to it. Huh. Interesting. It's a mystery. I have to figure out what that thing is. I think this is a school over here on the right. I hear a lot of kids yelling and screaming and laughing and playing. I also noticed that a lot of kids walking around with like backpacks, which makes me think uh, makes me think this is a school. Oh, this is cool. What is this? Artesania Las Payas. Artesania Las Payas. Hmm. Wonder what this is. Very cool building. Painted bright blue. This is what I say about this neighborhood. It's like very bright colors. Very cool neighborhood. They, they weren't lying when they said it's like an artsy, bohemian kind of a neighborhood. Definitely looks like it. Hmm. So it turns out this place is like a... I don't know, like a, a shop where they're selling artisanal souvenirs. And it all looks very cool. It all looks very like handmade kind of, definitely not like cheapy mass produced stuff. It's very cool. I met uh, this nice woman, Katarina, and she said she speaks English, which is nice. <laughs> she said I could film in here. It's very, very cool. She said she was going to go get her boss, who's the owner, I guess. And maybe we can talk to her a little bit and see exactly what this place is all about. It's very cool. I'm seeing a lot of really cool stuff here. Hola, ¿qué tal? Uh, Hola, nice driving. Mucho gusto, mucho gusto. Estoy haciendo un video uh, sobre el barrio. 
y uh, ese lugar um, pues, me, me parece muy interesante. Ah, ¿Sí? muchísimas gracias. ¿Sí? ¿Es la primera vez que viene aquí? ¿o? Sí, sí, es mi primera vez, mi primera vez en, uh, en Perú, mi primera vez en ¿Y Lima. ¿Dónde viniste? Sí. Soy de Estados Unidos. Ah, bueno, well, sí. en que speak yeah. in English. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, is, it, is it okay for me to film? Yes. Would you like to be in the video and say hello? Without one teeth. Oh. But, I mean, <laughs> it's my fault for putting, not putting in the false teeth. Oh, it's, uh, está bien, está bien. I, if I you, have no problem at all. Hmm. How did you find us? Well, I, I was walking by and I just saw it from the outside. Well, it seemed like a very interesting place to come in and just... Well, Just I've been here for bit. 37 years. 37 years, wow. Well, started on top of the world until COVID came. Yeah. When we were closed for two years, uh -huh. and then for the political situation, three years. Yes. The violent, not the one now, which is equally complicated. Right, but the one last year with yeah. uh, Senor so, Castillo. And, and so talking all this from the artisan's point of view, or from just handicrafts in general yes and you you know all the artists you have have like I a relationship all with all of the artists wow <laughs> wow incredible really incredible and my mother-in-law who is of german origin pulled me into this world oh wow so how long have you lived here in in lima 55 years it might be 56 or 7 so you've seen you've seen it all here in lima uh but Been through uh, a lot. i came married and then I become a widow 10 years later. And I don't say that for any other reason to say, it, but I was a translator and my mother-in-law pulled me into the world ah. of handicrafts. So now I'm buying, uh, sometimes I say, oh, I'd like to buy more of something. Mm -hmm. uh, so I buy five more, and then somebody comes in and buys the five. So we're back at zero, round zero again. Yeah, yeah. So somebody makes something again. So you have a very, very keen eye for, for very uh, I mean, I fine, think, yeah, fine art. At the beginning, I couldn't go wrong because everything was good. Yes. Now yeah. if everything's traditional and everything's good, and I had a good teacher, mm -hmm. then I was part of a group that we were four of us, I think that were invited by the state and private people to participate in certain events uh, or exhibitions. And um, we did it, we in charge. And uh, I think one of the first big things that had a long time life was the North American Cultural Center with Pedro Pablo Alaiza as head were brave enough or had the eye to see and did once a year a big exhibition in their largest gallery in Miraflores of folk art mm. with a theme. And what Each year was it different, it might be weaving, it might be clay, from the Amazon, it might be, well, many different things. And one university, Ricardo Palmer, picked it up and made wonderful catalogues. I think it was 10 with time. Which, which years were, what years were that, was that during? A long time back. Uh, okay. How do you select the, what you're going to showcase and what, what you're going I to sell thought? here? I've known art, I've worked in this for 40 years, I know all the artisans, I travelled a lot, yes I know everybody. So what I've got now, some is vintage, some is new, Catherine's very good, she's worked with me for years, mm -hmm. she's super online, mm -hmm. I'm helpless online. <laughs> I'm good at selling because I speak four languages and I know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and uh, but she's fabulous online and also good selling. Mm -hmm. But the languages always help. Now here we have belts. Why are belts so important? My mother-in-law, years back, did a whole paper and studied, this is from the island of Takile mm -hmm. in Puno, and she studied the language that was written, the sign language, 
but everything meant something. Uh, this is Southern Highlands too, but this is alpaca, alpaca, alpaca. This is mainly pu Puno. These are mainly Puno. Mokegua further south. Now watch her, that's Apurimac. This is definitely Puno and older. That was really the 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 craftsmanship is yeah. is really incredible. So you've got some patterns a bit like that, but you see, uh, but you see the quality. That's Central Highlands, but that is synthetic. They don't make anything else anymore. Mm -hmm. How many would you say, just estimate of how many different artists do you work with, like on a pretty regular basis? No? Because I know most of them from time back. Mm -hmm. Some aren't working, but uh, quite a lot. Quite a lot. Understatement. Yeah. Uh, this is this clay is from Chulucanas, which is northern coast. There. They had a very, they're very well known as great potters for many, many years back. But um, in COVID time, they lost a lot of people from COVID. Mm -hmm. And then they had huge floods, coastal floods. But now they're back. Hirasimo is probably most of, one of the most famous. Now it's made now, but he's been working since he was young. Wow. So, he, uh, he at uh, Santiago uh, too. They're they're very well known, and basically everything is um, signed in that case. This is a young artisan. Um, and uh, some of the old ones, for some unknown reason, oh, there's one that Claudio Jimenez does fabulous miniatures. Really? But he's working alone with his wife. Mm -hmm. So how long does it make to make 20 yeah. minutes? Yeah, exactly. And how fast can I sell them? Yeah, yeah. So he's making more, but I haven't got any at the moment. These are really incredible. But these are his hearts. These are Claudio's hearts. He's a great master. Wow. Are they traditional? No, they're fine. Oh, but they're, they're just, they're great. He's a uh, well-known Joran Shekhar. He's just had an exhibition. But he asked me, what, 20, 25 years ago if he could paint. Mm -hmm. He was a hunter from the Amazon. Mm. He didn't know what to paint. So I said, animals. And he said, what animals? And I said, no. What animals do you know? Mm -hmm. Now he still brings little things for me. But in big galleries, he has big galleries, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, Northern Highlands. Oh, this is the baby alpaca. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's very, very soft. Wow. Um, this was a project of Oxfam GB to give work to women in shanty towns collapsed in COVID. I work now with two families. Why only two? Because I demand quality, I get quality, I pay for quality, and I get very proud people. Mm -hmm. Blankets from the Northern Highlands. They came wow. down after not seeing them since Covid, mm -hmm. just before Christmas, and Catherine online and I talking, we managed to sell five in two weeks. Wow. Because they had, they, it was, uh, nobody else was buying from them, mm -hmm. and I paid two that were on consignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a different area, this oh. is uh, Ancash, Central Highlands, that's Northern Highlands. Magic Charms and Amulets from the Southern Highlands, of which I have the best collection, personally. 
You can come back another day. <laughs> what are what are these made from? My, uh, they're made out of alabaster. Oh. They're shamanic. They're positive. Often it's to the earth, and nobody knows about them, and there's hardly anything written about them. Mm -hmm. This pottery is our home, which is Northern Amazon. It was declared by UNESCO as cultural patrimony of the world about four years ago. The other day, three people came in and the lady said, very politely, thank you. Why thank you? She was the head of the UNESCO. Really? When she started Really? The wow. And then she said something else. I was listening and being polite. Uh, I ha she hadn't seen this quality for a very long time. Wow. But that I knew. That is, that is it, for someone who is a curator, that must be a very high compliment, right? High praise. So, uh, I know, because... I have the right sources, I can choose what I want, mm -hmm. and yes, my quality is good. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely, I can see, of course. These are the bulls that are put in pairs on the roofs of the houses in the area of Puno for protection. They're like the godparents of the roof of the house. Nowadays you see red bulls and purple bulls and gold bulls and silver bulls mm -hmm. and all the colour in the world bulls. Mm -hmm. Why don't I have them? Because they're all made on a machine. Mm -hmm. And I don't have things made on a machine. So I was happy to get these. Gourds. Wow. We can, this, I work with the Central Highlands with this people I've always worked. Mm -hmm. Now people have got them in Cusco, I think there's migration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have no reason to leave the people I don't, I've always worked sure, with. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, we can have a baby owl. <laughs> well, uh, oh, cool. Is there nothing wrong with a baby owl? <laughs> These are great. And we can have, will you sit down? No, you won't sit down. Yeah, a baby guinea pig. <laughs> Little cooey. There's Sounds nothing wrong with a baby guinea pig. No, no. But then you have a one of a kind collection of pieces. Oh, these, now, these things are. Oh, the birds? Yeah. Come from the Central Highlands. I've and asked them. They the use artisans. they use the because the gourd has that shape, right? And they, they use the shape of the gourd yeah. and put on a pe uh, a beak and two feet. That's incredible. That's and great. And these are penguins. Oh yeah. You do get small penguins on the coast, but they made these are made in the mountains. Oh. And these are fine ones. Oh yeah, the the detail on it is incredible. I can't even, <laughs> well, if I get close enough to see the detail, because it's so fine, the camera won't even focus. It's very cool. Wow. Uh, oh, da, da, da. Um, weavings from the, mainly the Southern Highlands. One hair is the Ruben dog. Yeah, who's this little guy? Yeah. <laughs> ah, he's a poor hairless Peruvian dog that you can't touch because he sometimes bites. Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, bye, sir. This is my home, my garden. Oh, this is so lovely. This must be a wonderful place to live. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Am I glad we decided to turn down this street and head? I mean, we're literally just going around the back because we wanted to see what it was like on the back streets and off of the main street and, and saw that little sign on the side of that building. 
took a quick look on my phone to see what it was on Google Maps. Turns out it is, you know, an artisan store where they sell folk art. So I decided, okay, well, let's go in. Let's check it out. And that's, that's incredible. Met Mari and, uh, and Katarina. Just incredible. The, the, the collection that they had there was, I mean, it was really, really impressive. Very impressive. I sort of got an idea of uh, the price range, and there's a very wide price range. Some of those things in there, like the little uh, gourds that were painted like different animals, they were, you know, 15 or, or 20 soles. So that's, you know, that's like uh, less than $10. It's it's five, ten dollars It's it's very affordable. And then some of those things were, were much more expensive up into the, you know, multiple thousands of soles, but still, it's, it was a very, very uh, interesting and a very eclectic collection. And the fact that it's all handmade and that uh, Mari has such uh, a connection with all of the artists. She knows where it's coming from. She knows what, um, uh, like, she, she knows the people individually, who they are and their history and all of that and the history of all those things in there really really incredible look uh if you come to this neighborhood barranco i don't even know where i am i gotta try and tell you where this place is look i'm gonna put the link of course to all the contact information down in the description and i'm also going to put in a subtitle right here the address because like i said we just turned down this corner randomly and uh, i don't quite even know what street i'm on but i'll put the address down in the description or in the uh uh, subtitle so if you come to Lima and you come to Barranco you should visit that place <laughs> you should really visit that place and you should take a look especially if you want something uh, to remember your trip something to take home with you uh, you should go to that place <laughs> I don't know what else to say we're gonna check out the rest of this neighborhood though okay now here I know what this is because I looked uh, saw this on the map this is the Alameda de Sáenz Peña. Also mentioned in our previous video from Chile, from Santiago, or no, from uh, Argentina? Our video about Argentina and Chile? I don't know, look, I've made a lot of videos at this point, and uh, if there's anyone that's relevant, I'll put it in the description down below. But anyway, Roque Sáenz Peña, the uh, Argentine, former president of the Republic of Argentina, who before he was president, of the Republic of Argentina, volunteered to fight in the War of the Pacific. I was a colonel in the uh, Peruvian army, fought in the Battle of Moro Arica. Goes back to Argentina, and he's popular enough to become president of Argentina. How cool is that? Very, very interesting guy. All right, we're gonna get across here. Try not to get run over. Ooh. Yeah, here he is. Uh, donated by, oh, well, this is donated by Curta Lorenzo, someone else. Lorenzo Perez Roca. But I think this is the guy. Peña, right? Roca, science, Peña. Correct me if I'm wrong. This obelisk monument in the middle is not, uh, is not dedicated to him. But I think it is. I think it is. Anyway, got a little off track here. I have no idea where we are. Look, I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna figure out where we are. And uh, one of the things I wanna do, cause you know, look, we were only here for a little while so far. Went and got that coffee, got that sandwich. I'm still actually kinda hungry. Uh, I wanna get a little something else to eat and noticed in this neighborhood there are a lot of like sushi restaurants I haven't had sushi since uh, the sushi we had in Santiago and uh, the, um, the sushi I've heard here in Lima is quite good uh, makes sense because Lima is a world-class food city and right here by the ocean in fact if you look at the end of the park here there it is the ocean let's go down and take a look at the ocean real quick Get a beautiful ocean view, and then we're gonna go find a restaurant, hopefully a sushi restaurant, and get a little something else to eat, because I'm still hungry. 
beautiful ocean view down here at the end of the uh, Alameda de Roque Sáenz Peña. Definitely tell why this is a popular neighborhood. And uh, look, I'm not gonna lie, so far we've made our video about Miraflores, which uh, I enjoyed exploring Miraflores. And I can definitely see why people want to stay there. But uh, I don't know, this neighborhood. I like this. Uh, I, say, I like this better. I, no, no disrespect to Miraflores, but there is something about this neighborhood that is a little more uh, my style. Avenida Bolognese, Bolognese. Like I mentioned, this is the Metropolitano route. Runs along here. All right, we're right here, Aka Sushi, and uh, this is the place we're gonna try, Aka Sushi. Let's give it a go. So we started off here with a nice beer, a nice afternoon beer, a Pilsen, the beer of the people, and uh, it was good, of course, nice and cold. And afterwards, we got our sushi. We ordered a uh, rainbow roll, which was a little different from the rainbow roll that I'm usually used to. Rainbow roll is like a California roll with fish on top. This one had fish on some of the rolls, some of the other rolls it had uh, avocado, and then on some of the other rolls it had mango, which was very good actually, a sort of good balance between um, like sweet and savory. The other roll we got was something called a monkey roll. Now this is a very non-Japanese style roll. This is where you get like the, um, you know, the Peruvian Lima fusion uh, into sushi, because basically this was a roll that was stuffed with like breaded chicken in the middle and also like uh, a little bit of cream cheese. And then on top it had um, fried sweet plantains. Uh, very interesting, definitely not authentic uh, Japanese sushi, but very, very tasty nonetheless. All right, that was quite tasty. I am very, very full right now. Um, <clears throat> that was good. I mean, you know, was it authentic Japanese sushi? No, probably not. I've never actually been to Japan, but you know, we're not in Tokyo, we're in Lima. So what did we get? We got the Lima version of sushi. It's really interesting. The uh, rainbow roll had, you know, like fried sweet plantains in the middle. That uh, monkey roll had plantains on the outside. I don't know, it's very, very interesting take on sushi, but I'm glad that I had it. And it was uh, extremely affordable. My God, the two rolls were like a combo where you could pick from like a long list of rolls and get two of them for 30 soles, which is like $8 US. And uh, everything, including two beers and a tip, was like 50 soles. It's like 50 soles, that's like $15. So excellent, excellent deal. Um, yeah, Aka Sushi. You get a thumbs up, Aka Sushi. If you're ever here in Barranco, in Lima, Peru, and you want to try some interesting sushi, check that place out, Aka Sushi, on uh, Avenido, Avenida uh, Francisco Bolognese. Well, we're back here in the central plaza of Barranco, out in front of the beautiful library, out in this really, really beautiful plaza. The church right over there, right where we started the day, and uh, and I'm really glad that I came out to visit this place today. Look, I'm not going to lie. Yesterday, I was walking around all over the place. I walked around so much yesterday, filming all over the place. And, like, I was stupid. I didn't drink enough water. So, when I woke up this morning, like, I was all dehydrated. My muscles were stiff. My head hurt. I did not want to, like, even leave the apartment. I didn't even want to get out of my bed. It was just like real bad. I felt like I was really hungover even though I didn't drink anything, which is always the worst. But uh, I said, you know what? I don't want to waste a day while I'm here in Lima. And I had heard a few good things about this neighborhood. And I said, what? Let's just hop on the bus. We'll hop on the Metropolitano and we'll head down here and we'll check it out. And man, I am really glad that I decided to do that because this neighborhood is really, really nice. Like this tiny little district just sort of tucked in here, right? in between uh, the, uh, the ocean and the uh, Avenida, Avenida um, Francisco Bolognese. 
just this cool little neighborhood, man. It's like all tucked in here. Lots of art galleries and beautiful old architecture, a very colorful neighborhood, lots of plazas. And, uh, you know, we had a good time. We got the three things that, uh, the three things that I think uh, make for a, uh, a successful day, right? A successful day out when you're exploring some new city. We saw interesting things. We uh, ate delicious food and we met some really uh, friendly and interesting people. And I think that makes for a successful excursion, right? A successful day exploring. So I think we're just gonna head back now. And I'm at the Napolitano. Go straight back here, right back down this pedestrian walk where we came when we got off the bus this morning and uh, that'll be it for this video. Look, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stick around because there's going to be a lot more.